it's Tuesday afternoon, it's 4 p.m. in Switzerland and here in Bremen. So it's Space Cafe Web Talk time. Our Space Cafe Web Talk, 33 minutes with Professor Pascal Ehrenfreund, here, will begin very, very soon. Thanks for joining us for a talk here live from the Space Tech Expo in Bremen today. As always, we appreciate your feedback and your ongoing, um, no, your participation and your ongoing feedback. So. That's what it is. Um, we also like to thank our host here, Ariane Group, for giving us the opportunity to use their, to hijack their stand, actually. So I'm Torsten Kreening, your host today and publisher of spacewatch.global. We are a Switzerland-based online platform for information in and about space and new space activities in a geopolitical context. I know many of you are already familiar with our website, our bi-weekly and daily newsletters and the Space Cafe podcast. Our latest episode features one of Europe's hottest startup, hottest project, ClearSpace. And we talked with Luke Pickett about tow trucks in space. And for all our fans of audio content, we started with our Space Cafe radio shows, where we talk with interesting people on the road, on conferences, on shows, and the latest radio interview was released yesterday, no, two days before, my interview with Thomas Grübler, the CEO of Aurora Tech, after receiving the Spark, the German Digital Award in Berlin. And we also keep our fan shop open online for you to support us actively and become a space watcher, as you can see. By getting you a t-shirt, you help us to continue our work. I and if you, have, you don't have a t-shirt, <laughs> That would be then After? afterwards, <laughs> yeah. By getting, no, I thought you did already. So if you've missed any of our previous web talks, we have an archive available on our webpage in the event section and on YouTube. So let's start. My guest today is someone that does not need a huge introduction, as you all know her. She is one of the role models for women in the space sector. She was a guest in our Space Cafe podcast and in our summits already. And today I'm happy to speak with her here in Bremen live in her new role. Welcome, Professor Pascal Ehrenfreund. And Thank you. Pascal is Ehrenfreund is the president of the International Space University, the role I mentioned earlier. And she is also a research professor of space policy and international affairs at the Space Policy Institute of the George W. University in Washington, D.C. She is still the president of the International Astronautical Federation and visiting professor at Leiden Observatory. And until 2020, she was the chair of the executive board of the German Aerospace Center DLR. I will stop here as you all can read her impressive and very impressive bio on the IEF or the ISU website. So, Pascal, again. Welcome to our show. Let's start. Thank you. Before starting with your new role, let us briefly review the other big space event, the IC in Bremen. We had Remco, who's here in the audience as well, live on the floor in, in one of the space cafes during that day. But as the IEF president, it was your event. So what are your takeaways from the Dubai event? Well, you know, the International Astronautical Federation is organizing uh, this one year event where all the space stakeholders meet the International Astronautical Congress. And this year it was organized in Dubai and the United Arab Emirates, also at the same time as the, the Expo Dubai, uh, which is the world exhibition. So it was a really, really uh, good uh, coincidence and uh, it was the first time that we uh, meet after two years because we had uh, to do the Congress in, uh, in 2020 as a cyberspace edition virtually. And so uh, I think it was really a great gathering and uh, we are very happy that there were 5,080 participants, something what we actually did not expect after this really challenging year of the pandemic. 
And I think the space community from all the world was really, really happy to meet again in person. This was really also the heads of space agencies uh, met. We had, of course, the conference with the, in, in, in uh, coordination with the United Nations. We had the young space generation uh, there, many, many young people. And I think it was a really, really successful conference. And we can say that the space sector is really very robust despite uh, the pandemic and there are amazing endeavors and there were a lot of discussions for the future. Okay, so on any particular takeaways for you where you say that struck me, I mean you mentioned Expo, Expo is the thing for our audience, yeah. whereas the Eiffel Turm was presented a few decades ago, but so what was this Eiffel, Eiffel Tower moment in Dubai? Well, I think um, first when, when people meet after such a long time, uh, it was very, very exciting for everybody. And uh, I'm sure there are a lot of cooperations uh, uh, which have been done. We had uh, quite uh, insights in the space uh, agency panel where you know, India and Russia and, uh, and, and, and the US and China and Japan and Europe have been, uh, Canada have been discussing about uh, future collaboration. There was a quite an interesting focus on climate change. I think something which is really important uh, to cooperate in, in in the future. We had new announcements like uh, the orbital brief, uh, the yeah. future space stations uh, from Blue Origin. So I think there were, um, and I uh, I saw a lot of young, enthusiastic space prof professionals and from all over the world, yeah? And they were all very excited they about you. They were all you very excited also to meet and discuss. Yeah, and you're yeah. a human. You are not this president which was somewhere in the ivory tower. You talk to the young people. Yes, and that's but what they really, why they really love you. All the IF members do that. I have to say that. And they were really, really, really happy to interact with the entire community of the IF. But it was reported especially um, about you. So I ask you, under the new leadership, what is your vision? I mean, as we see at the moment, this evolution in the space sector yeah. and also the connection to the space sector. So, I mean, it's not this nerd thing anymore. No. So... Uh, the ISU, the International Space University, has a great legacy. 35 years um, of this really unique interdisciplinary, international and intercultural space education, something which is not done anywhere in the world. However, uh, we uh, really have to keep up and have a cutting edge space education for the future because of the really rapidly developing space sector. We have increased entrepreneurship. We have commercial opportunities. We have a diversifying uh, downstream sector in particular an integration with the non-space sector. So we need a future space leaders and a space workforce, a stellar space workforce, which is actually matching this um, a rapid expanding space sector and uh, brings it further into the future. So we have a lot of work to do uh, uh, at the International Space University, uh, University. We have to branch out uh, more, much more internationally. We have to do, uh, you know, a rebranding globally. We have to work uh, with US, Asia, but also with Africa, South America, Oceania. We have to strongly connect uh, with uh, those. We have actually now started an accreditation process for our space masters. We will start an endowment fund uh, in, in the US. So there is a lot of, of action going on uh, and uh, we have to keep up because the space sector is advancing in really in, in, in rapid pace. <laughs> and, and all that happened when you've been just a few months in, in the sea, so. Definitely, yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> very short time, yeah. Absolutely, so but, I mean, there is no light without shadow, so what are the challenges, the hard challenges ISU faces right now? Well, obviously, uh, like every educational institution, we are recovering from the challenges of the pandemic. We had uh, one master class, for instance, which was, uh, uh, not able to come to campus. We had an interdisciplinary space program in the summer uh, 2020. We had a rather difficult summer program this year because we could not put people together uh, in, in, in 120 people together because of, uh, of, of COVID regulations. 
So um, like every educational institution, we really have to recover. We have a lot of travel restriction from China, from, from India and, 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 and from, the, uh, from the East. So uh, we have uh, reduced presence on, on, on campus and we have to recover from this. Uh, uh, and uh, we have um, to go through an accreditation process for the Space Master. We have also really to make sure that we provide a safe environment. Why is this accreditation process so, so important? Well, to, to, it, to is, uh, it is uh, um, something which um, is important for a space master uh, uh, because uh, it gives you more opportunities uh, in the future in the space in the space sector for applicants. It is not necessary for everybody in the world. It depends on the country, but many countries, in particular in Europe, it is a very important certificate, yeah. uh, and also in the in the United States. And uh, this has been under discussion for more than a decade and uh, we are going through this uh, process right now and uh, hope that we will succeed uh, uh, next year and I think this is an important thing you know to create an endowment fund also is something which ICU has discussed over a long time yeah. and uh, we will try to do that now um, my vice president uh, uh, for North America is handling that at the moment so we have to to, to um, try to provide uh, the International Space University uh, with a sustainable future. And now it's really getting hot, so I'm, I'm somehow have to... Uh, we, we are, I cannot, we I cannot take off my jacket, but it's really hot here. <laughs> <laughs> um, you were about talking about uh, or mentioning the, the safe environment yeah. you want to provide, and yes. I think that's very important as we, as we speak about yes. it. Yes, we, we work in an intercultural environment, and uh, uh, respect, uh, food, uh, any kind of harassment. Uh, this is something uh, which really is uh, as a challenging environment, and we have to make sure that um, you know staff and, and 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 students and young professionals are in a safe environment. We take that very seriously. We just uh, created a new committee uh, in order uh, to look at all the processes, and we will introduce in all our programs, you know, specific modules. Uh, to uh, really to foster mutual respect and a safe environment for all our students and staff. I mean, we all have read uh, your newsletter from the start of, of this this month and and got a taste um, what it means. And I think that was well placed and um, yeah, also also needed. Yeah, so I think every thank you very much for this for us. Really has uh, uh, has 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 to make sure that. Uh, we are, uh, you know, treating our students and that we are listening uh, to to everybody. There's one thing which I forgot. That was digital education. Yeah. Um, due to the COVID, um, uh, many educational institutions have to provide, you know, an element of digital education, and we are actually also really working on that. We did already an interactive space program. I was not yet on board. This is my predecessor. Did that very successfully. And there are many people which are now used to the system in the COVID pandemic, and we have to develop this kind of uh, uh, digital learning also at ISU. As we all experience we it right now, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> after, after the lockdown, as before the lockdown, so use yeah, the yeah, time yeah. in between, yeah. So space becomes more mainstream, as, yeah. I mean, as we see here in Bremen, yeah. uh, the market grows super fast, um, yes. but it also, are increases the competition in the education. I mean, like in every, every other sector. So courses are offered, as we, I know, from Luxembourg, St. Gallen, and of course, outside Europe. So how will you make ISU even more attractive? Yeah, I think this is a necessary process because yeah. when the space sector grows and diversifies, uh, you have also, you know, to upgrade education. So the International Space University has this legacy and um, it has this unique interdisciplinary education and this global network of 5,200 alumni from 110 countries. We have an extended faculty of 160 people worldwide in all the different topics. So we have some kind of a unique status. Uh, and I think when we look at the different, um, for instance, space business schools, uh, other schools which are, you know, um, uh, coming into place, uh, it is more a question how we cooperate, how we try to be um, 
to work complementary because what we really need and what we heard this morning yeah, in the industry panels, it is fight for talents. Yes. This industry in particular and also space agency need a well-educated stellar workforce for the future. And we have all to work together. If it's the space tech master course in Graz, which uh, is really a very high level, more or less already people which have a PhD, uh, you know, entering the space sector, and and or if it's those uh, space business courses, um, or the different masters in Luxembourg and in Germany. I think we all really have to work together that we have a very very strong curriculum uh, for uh, the the workforce in Europe. And you have the connections. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mention the space mafia now, but yeah. we know who to ask. Yeah. So how do you see the entrepreneurship in the space sector evolve or these days and how to educate now the young talents, in particular well, actually, here in Europe? Yeah, well, actually, we see that with entrepreneurship, we have more and more young professionals which are, um, are entering the space sector. So we did, um, my, my predecessor did uh, actually a survey in, 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 a, in, a, in a class and there were 70% of the uh, young professionals and students in the class which opted for entrepreneurship, wanted to start a company, wanted to learn how to start a company, wanted to learn more about entrepreneurship. So we have uh, immediately integrated that in, in the ISU curriculum. We have now electives, but we have also a space policy and entrepreneurial lab. And we have an incubator and with uh, now seven companies. So we have all the possibilities, you know, in cooperation with the region in, in Strasbourg in order to um, foster entrepreneurship. Obviously, we have also the international connections. And I think this is a very, very important process in Europe. We still have to overcome this risk aversion. Uh, we have to have many, many more uh, young professionals, you know, starting uh, companies and, uh, you know, uh, bringing innovative solutions to the space sectors. And uh, the International Space University has to be one of mm -hmm. uh, those organizations which helps to foster that in, in combination with, of course, many other organizations. But these entrepreneurs you're talking about, are they coming from outside the sector into the sector or are these young space talents that are creating their own ideas? Yes. So, the, the latter one uh, to the okay. ISU. This, uh, uh, we have uh, actually created ISU uh, as over, over the past decade, uh, ISU alumni I have created 110 companies from I think 27 countries yeah and some of them are really really very big as you uh, as you know like planet inspire so uh, I think we are a good place uh, where people can meet and uh, you know brainstorm ideas and then uh, found the company and having also an incubator and also the education dedicated to entrepreneurship I think it's a very important process in in, in Europe mm -hmm. and we, we we really want to continue uh, on that path. Don't forget Space Watch Global. Absolutely. Also, and, and <laughs> never, <laughs> never. <laughs> and ISU alumni created that. Okay, so one topic that is very close to your heart and we also cover it as best as we can, um, more women in the space sector. Sure. How will you foster it? How will ISU enable that? Well, I have to say that uh, in our classes, we have a very, very uh, great balance uh, between um, female and male students. It's, it's practically 50%. Uh, not every year 100%, but, uh, but uh, I think we did very well. We could definitely improve with faculty members mm -hmm. uh, and governing members. Uh, so uh, we are trying to do that. But I think it's an overall holistic approach with many organizations, mm -hmm. also in the International Astronautical Federation, we have the 3G gender, geography and generation um, initiative. Uh, we have the astronaut in here, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> we, have, um, uh, we have, of course, space for women from the United Nations. We have uh, uh, women in aerospace. We have to work together. Uh, to provide role models and encourage women actually to take also leadership positions That's in the right. space sector. Uh, it's a problem which starts before because um, women do not like so much to study natural science and engineering in many of the countries. And we have actually to start with inspiration long, long before they actually come to university. We all know that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and you know, there are a lot of uh, studies which show that uh, diversity and, and uh, gender equality really brings companies stronger results and more revenue. So everybody should read these papers and, and foster, and we will do what we can uh, to do the same. Cool. And are there, besides the ISU, other organizations that try to um, to engage more women into the sector? Yeah, I think everybody, every organization uh, is trying to do that. And uh, um, there are different models, like having networks, like having role models in a, in a, a critical mass in the, in the company. Quota arrangements is something which is uh, something which is not so much liked, uh, but it is necessary in, 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 in particular in advisory boards when you are going to, to more executive positions. Um, but I think everybody should look at the studies and uh, also the women in aerospace just published a, a C-suite, uh, you know, women in the C-suite uh, white paper. So really, really good, uh, good papers, which everybody should look at uh, what kind of measures we can take to move forward. So uh, and it's our audience can do to help on having more women in this space yeah, sector? Yeah, I think it's a lot of encouragement. It's a, a lot of inspiring women actually already to study new subjects. But when we look at the diversity of the space sector, you know, and having, you know, this uh, connection between space and non-sector, it's, it's mostly of also bringing women in the space sector. We see, for instance, in Earth Observation, we see a lot of women particular data science, we have to bring them a little bit more into launchers and space exploration. I think we can do that because the topics and the endeavors are really, really great. And it's interesting that you, that, that you say that. Uh, I mean, I heard once uh, somebody from the intelligence community yeah. uh, exactly saying that, that the women are doing the better job than men in, in Earth observation analytics. Yeah, and I know that uh, that that uh, that many many uh, uh, women favor this kind of data science. Also, probably this link to sustainability and climate change. Uh, Maybe. Uh, that's what uh, um, I've read a re recent report. We have a lot of uh, 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 females in this uh, region. So to to sum it up, so yeah. what can we expect from the ISU in the coming year if we are not going into a deep lockdown again? So. Yes, uh, we. I think we all hope that. But when we look here at, uh, I would say at, at the Space Tech Expo at Bremen, we are here. I think there's suddenly more than thousand, probably two thousand people, and uh, so the space sector is uh, really robust. Uh, so we um, have um, a lot of executive space mm -hmm. courses all over the world, and we have mm -hmm. also. Uh, um, a studies program in Portugal okay. and in, in Arch and we, uh, we, we hope that this is going great after this last two years uh, and we have a lot of uh, support from, from Portugal. Um, we try to go to the accreditation, we are trying to make a really, really exciting curriculum for the, for the future master uh, and really um, to help uh, to produce a stellar workforce for the future. You mentioned before the, and I think that's important for the next year as well, the incubator you have with, with this yes. lean space. And there, I think this morning was a big announcement mm -hmm. about their activities, and they're also doing the, um, the hackathon in yes. parallel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We're a proud media partner of that. So, yes. Is there anything particular you want to point out on, on that direction? Yes. Uh, I think. Um, Everybody's really exciting about the development of this incubator. There are more and more ideas. I have to say, of course, also COVID was challenging for that. But uh, we want to encourage that and we want to work with many more partners, also internationally, to grow uh, entrepreneurship at, uh, at ICU because it is a big topic everywhere. And um, tomorrow, there is, uh, of course, the hackathon of, of Lean Space. I've yeah. heard that there are 10 great uh, teams uh, which will compete and then get a lot of prizes. One, uh, uh, some of them are fellowships to study at ISU. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I mean, coming back. It was really from... hot here, yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's, well, we did not put you on the hot seat so yes, far. Yes, so, yes. Cool. Thank you very much, Justin. Thank you. So uh, let's see uh, if we have our next events up. 
um, I think so in the background. So do not miss, guys, uh, next week uh, on the 23rd, I will have the um, big chance to or opportunity to speak with Dr. Matthias Link from Luxembourg in my 33 minute program. On the 25th, the next Space Law Breakfast with Stephen Freeland uh, will be conducted in the morning. And we will have um, Joan Wheeler and Professor Ram Jaku um, in the house. On the 25th, um, we have also in the afternoon another lunch and lecture by Powering Space. On the 30th of November, another Tuesday, we have the 33 minutes with Joanna Bergstrom Ross from Giruna. And on the 3rd of December, you guys should look forward to that. Our next edition of the Space Cafe Benelux will happen. As always, all events are going to be online on Eventbrite, and we would like to hear your feedback. So please check in with us on Twitter, on Facebook, or LinkedIn, wherever you like. Don't forget to sign up to our daily or bi weekly newsletter. And if you like, if you guys like to treat yourself with something special, become a Space Watcher today. Your support helps us to continue our work. Take your credit card, visit our shop with on shop.spacewatch.global. It can't be easier for you. Again, thank you, Pascal, thank you. for this inspiring talk and being my guest. And again, to this entire team today, literally behind the camera for doing their great job week by week again. And I hope you all will stay safe and stay healthy, especially these days. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you next week. In the meantime, visit our website and follow us on social media. And don't forget, become a space watcher. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's cool.